live. All right, so let me get YouTube together. Yes, my loves, we are live on YouTube. Hello, good morning, YouTube, on Facebook and Instagram. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to Goddess Temple Sunday. Good morning, my loves. I'm Abiola, and this is our weekly blast of inspiration, motivation, and transformation to set the week off right. How are you today? Let me get myself together here because the goddesses are gathering. Hello, goddess V for vibrant. Oh, wait, let me plug in my microphone. Give me a sec. Microphone check. One, two, one, two. <laughs> All right, there we go. That is better. Hello, goddess Melissa. Hello, Coach Ross. Hello, goddess Aurora. Hello, goddess Natasha. Now, I missed some of you last week because I accidentally was broadcasting on the wrong page. I was broadcasting into my VIP Facebook group. So if you missed last week's session where we were talking about watering yourself down, please, please, please be sure that you catch the replay. Good morning, Goddess Justina. Yes, good morning, Dr. Beauty Free. We are a circle of global goddesses. And so let's begin by connecting with each other. There's Goddess Annabelle, my kitty cat, who may jump in. <laughs> She's feeling it. She's feeling the energy. She's feeling the spirit. She's wanting to jump in with us. So right now, let's just close our eyes, or you can keep them open, whatever works for you. And let's just connect. Let's connect and let's imagine that around the globe, we are stretched a global sisterhood holding hands around this planet, holding hands and coming to the circle with clear and positive intentions, which are so very needed at this moment in time. I know for me and I'm sure for you as well. And so here in our global sisterhood, we're gonna raise up our energy and we're gonna tune into the energy of the Most High, of the Creator. And we start with gratitude. We start with great gratitude and thank you. Mother, Father, God, Creator, thank you so much most high for bringing us together in this beautiful circle of sisterhood today on sunday thank you so much for allowing us to wake up again to open our eyes again to dream again and despite all that is happening in the world to know that as we are given another breath we are given another chance we are giving an, given another opportunity we are given another moment that all is not lost, that there is not despair, even when there seems to be, because there is order. There is divine order. And we forget this sometimes, but right now we tune into it. We tap into it. We give thanks for our sisters who are here in this circle. We give thanks to our sisters and brothers who are not here in this circle. We give thanks for the mighty oceans and the trees and our families by blood or otherwise. We give thanks for our ancestors, those who came before. We give thanks to those who came afterward. And of course, we give absolute thanks for divine guidance. And so we ask, I ask that you guide my words, guide my actions. Let me know what you would have me say where you would have me go, how you would have me be, for whom and to whom. We are here. We are attentive. We are excited. <laughs> and we are grateful. Amen. I say, and so it is. Yes! <laughs> All right, so let's get this Sunday morning party started. <laughs> Goddess Aurora said, Goddess Annabelle needs a show. She does. I don't know what she was doing, but I was feeling her having her own moment just now while we were setting our intention. Yes. All right, so let's get started. So last week, goddesses, we were talking about 
<laughs> yeah, I see Goddess Annabelle doing her thing. Last week, we were talking about watering yourself down. Greetings, Chef Amira. We were talking about not showing up to this party called life as your full, bountiful, incredible, and magical self. And then I got your beautiful emails afterward because a lot of you watched on the replay because I was broadcasting into the wrong group and the wrong circle. Well, no, it was the right circle. It was my spiritpreneur VIP circle, but it was just a closed circle instead of our open circle here. And so your emails were saying to me, well, you know, it sounds easy. I, 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 I realized when I was watching your broadcast, Abiola, that I have been watering myself down, that I have been holding myself back but I still don't know how to get out of it because I have family and I have friends and I have, you know, employees or a boss or people who have these expectations of me. And I do care what people think. And so how do I stop caring what they think? And so I wanted to come with, here with you today and just share with you, you know, cause I'm not about being a hypocrite. I am not here sitting here saying, I don't care what anybody thinks. I am not here. I, you know, I wish like when people are posting memes and they're like, I don't give up. Da, 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 da. I give all the Fs. <laughs> I care deeply what certain people think. I care deeply what my parents think because I happen to be close to them. You may not have that and that is fine. And so you're not obligated to care what they think, but I care deeply what my parents think. I care deeply what my siblings think. I care what my friends think because I care about them. And I care what you think, what my tribe thinks. But here's the difference. Here is what I feel like has been my personal evolution that maybe you can take a gem from that will help you on this journey. Hit the share button, because somebody needs to know this other than here in our circle. Hit the share button. Don't keep it to yourself. Hit the share button. Let's be in this together. So I, when I grew up and actually well into deep into my adulthood, <laughs> I was an extreme people pleaser. And I refer to myself as a recurring people pleaser because I wanted to, like many of you, fit in. I wanted to be right. I wanted to be presentable. I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to be all of those things. And the main thing that has been freeing for me in my movement away from that was not as much care, not caring about what people, other people think, OPO, other people's opinions. Who's down with OPO? <laughs> we are not down with OPO, other people's opinions. But a big part of that was trying to learn, coming to learn, stepping into what I think about myself. Yes, at that moment, at those times, I realized that I didn't have a grounded, powerful opinion about who I am, who I was, the woman that I wanted to be in the world, how I show up in the world. And so my opinion of myself was rooted in and based in um, the whims of the world. My opinion of myself was based in what the scale said, or the bank account said, or my man said, or my mom said. And, you know, with loving grace towards all of that, I realized that that ain't it. None of that had anything to do with how I really needed to approach my life and how I felt about myself. And so I want you to start with, you know, don't start with the other side of like, okay, how many, you know, how can I just stop caring? Because you, as I'm looking at you, you are a caring person. That is at your root. That is at your core. I know that because I am you and you magnetized yourself here and I magnetized you here. We are manifesting each other. Start with your opinion of yourself. Start with your opinion of your own magnificence. Start with your opinion of your own greatness. And that's not rooted, don't root it in ego. 
over how good you look <laughs> or if your fro happens to work out today or whatever it is. Start with rooting it in the fact that you are a powerful manifestation, that you are the universe expressing itself with love that you are literally the face of God, God of your understand, your own understanding, however you define that to be, right? Every good book, every good book says that we were made in the image of. So start with that. Start with that. You are magnificent because of that. You are magnificent because the energy spirit, the energy of the most high looks at you and says, yes, that's me. That's me expressing myself. That is the best of me. That is how I want to create myself on this planet. These are my children. This is who I'm going to send here to do my work, whatever that is, whether that is being an amazing mother or sister, a daughter, a friend, you know, a wife or whatever it is, a husband, etc. Or whether that's being an incredible coach, healer, therapist, trainer, chef, whatever it is that you, you, my love, right now, your ancestors, those who came before are looking at you with excited expectation and saying, oh my goodness, this is who I hoped for. This is what I dreamt about. This is what I sacrificed for. And so let's root our feelings of greatness, our feelings of enoughness, our feelings of feeling gratitude for who we are and who are, what our lives are in that, in that. Not on what the scale says, not on what the man says or the woman says or the bank account says, not on what your boss or your employees think, although we will get to all of that, but in the fact that you are spirit expressing itself in human form at this divine moment on this planet here. How magnificent is that? Oh my gosh, can we just breathe that in for a second? With all, with everything that is going on that you are so loved. You are so loved that a divine entity that we can't comprehend with our puny human understanding, right? People try to anthropomorph anthropomorphize <laughs> fifty dollar word left over from sociology <laughs> anthropomorphize the divine spirit right because we don't have you know we don't have you know the capacity to understand something like so, such an energy of force that is so great so we put our our human understanding which is fine we're doing the best that we can we are doing the absolute best that we can but whatever, whatever force has created you has said, this is the best of me, my child. Your creator, your, the spirit, the divine spirit has said, this is the best of me, my child. Go forth and do what I would have you do. Go forth and be here in human form. Go forth and have free will to be your own magical, wonderful, crazy, messy, beautiful, brilliant, incredible self. Oh my goodness. Like that is just, that gives me chills that gives me absolute chills how loved must you be how loved must you be that at this moment here on this planet you know there was no other time in human creation that i'm aware of where we would have been able to have this global sister circle around the planet and how magnificent that you were chosen, that I were chosen, that we have manifested each other and that we were manifested to incarnate together at this time to be able to do this. So when we root our opinion of ourselves in that, when we ground our opinion of ourselves in that energy, rather than the energy of, what do people think of me? Am I wearing the right thing? Am I speaking the right way? Am I presentable enough? Am I good enough? Enough, 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 enough. 
because we are enoughness period we are you are i am we are the universe expressing itself you are the divine saying hey walk for me live for me be you for me how are you going to take the gifts that i have given you and give them back like how amazing is that that is so incredible and so when you take that the fact that your creator said here go forth my child and be your magical wonderful self and the fact that somebody may say i don't like you I don't like her. I don't like what she's doing. She sucks. That doesn't make any sense. Why would she do that? Why would she say that? Why would she choose that? Why would she live like that? Why won't she stop being like herself and be more like me? The underlying voice under all criticism. Why won't she stop being like herself and be more like me? Oh my God. <laughs> like it's not even right. Like let's move this down here. It's not even a contest. It's not even a competition. And so begin with the energy of rooting your self-love, not in what you are seeing as your physical human self. That's fun. That's fun. I am the first person. I love adornment. What? I love some makeup and some hair and clothes and, you know, fixing up my house and all of that. I love that. But that is, that, that's just the superficial. That's the sprinkles on top of the cake. <laughs> that's the sprinkles. That has nothing to do with you waking up. Yes, Goddess Melissa. Goddess Melissa says, every morning I wake up and tell myself, I see you. Yes, wake up every day and see yourself for who you are. See yourself for the divine expressing itself in its own reflection in the magnitude, the magnitude of spirit, looking at, again, you know, the God of your own understanding to say, wow, wow, you decided to create me at this time and give me an opportunity to shine. So then from there, when other people are telling you that you're on the wrong journey or you're on the wrong path or you're wearing the wrong thing or you look like the wrong person or again like i said the root of all criticism stop being like yourself and be more like me you can brush that off <laughs> you can brush that off and i'm not talking about constructive criticism which is designed to you know make you better and the reason is that most people most people don't know how to give constructive criticism. So the moment that somebody is coming at you going, don't take this the wrong way, but up. Oh. <laughs> All right, let, let me, I'm gonna have to stop you right there because you know I understand that you wanna lovingly share your opinion, but there is a chance that I may take it the wrong way. And because my opinion of myself is greater than, you know, um, whatever thoughts you may have on me or how I'm living my life, I cannot allow you to continue that sentence if you're beginning with don't take this the wrong way. That means that there is a chance that you know that what you're about to say is trying to rock my boat or rock my life, right? <laughs> Goddess Lotus B. Meusa says, receiving this. Goddess Ivory says, I am everything I need to be right now. Yes, let's affirm that. I am everything I need to be right now. Let's affirm that. I am everything that I need to be right now. You are enough. You are enough. And how powerful and how magical is that? That we could still be in evolution. We could still be in a state of growth. We could still be in a state of happening. But at this moment, you are enough. It's like when we look at a flower, right? Like at every stage, that flower is complete and divine and enough, even though it is growing and evolving and changing and may look different than it looks today. You are enough. Let's affirm that. I am enough. Type it in. I am enough. You are enough. And here is the real, true, miraculous thing about that. The wonderful thing is that any one of us, any one of us plus spirit 
is a majority. So if you're looking for the majority opinion on you and your life and your life choices, any one of us plus spirit is a majority. And you being perfect is not a part of the equation. You being perfect is not what was asked of you when you were given the gift of life. Us being perfect was not what was asked of us because perfection doesn't exist. Perfection is us being our authentic selves. So, you know, for example, like I'm sitting here right before I had my I had my nail polish. I wanted to polish my nails, <laughs> do a bootleg, polish my nails, nail polish job quick before I got on camera and didn't get a chance to, but that doesn't matter. That has nothing to do. Like I could be sitting here in my PJs and I have having this conversation because none of that has anything to do with this, us connecting with our hearts. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the hearts, Instagram. I am enough. Affirm it. I am enough. And anytime that anything in life throws you off course, whether it's someone's opinion of yourself or your own opinion of yourself, come back to the fact that you are enough and that your birth certificate is the only proof that you need that we need you, that you are here on this planet at this moment for a reason. And you don't have to understand what that reason is. You don't have to have the complete answer for that. In fact, the answer that you have this week may be different than the answer that you have next week. Every single thing that you do, some people are gonna love it, some people are gonna hate it. Some people won't think about it at all. Because <laughs> the fact is some people, a lot of people are not thinking about us at all. And that is a wonderful thing. They're too busy worrying about their own lives. Everything that you do, some people will love it. Some people will hate it. Some people won't be thinking about it at all. And that is okay. That is the nature of life. You know, like, what's the saying? Okay, I'm going to modify it a little bit. Opinions are like noses. <laughs> Everybody has one, right? <laughs> Opinions are like noses. Everybody has one. And so if you're watering yourself down, if you're watering down your energy, your very being, your authenticity, your messy, beautiful, wonderful self, in order to be acceptable to people who don't even accept themselves, think about what that means. That if the average person does not love and accept themselves because we're all on a journey, no judgment, we're all on a journey. You are trying to make yourself acceptable. You're trying to make other people have a great opinion of you who don't have a great opinion of themselves. You're trying to make people, other people happy with what you do who are unhappy with what they're doing. Like, does that make sense? <laughs> does that make sense at all? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And so let's start by not taking anything personally, realizing that, you know, everybody here, you know, like the, the saying, you know, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. It is hard out there. It is challenging. Other people don't know your journey and you don't know theirs. They don't know what it took for you to get just to wherever it is that you are for you, for them to be able to criticize you. They don't know that. They don't know your journey. They don't know your walk. And it's okay because they don't need to know your journey. You're not here journeying for them. They don't need to know your walk. You're not here walking for them. They don't need to know how you show up and show out and connect to your divine. They don't need to know or understand any of that. And I want you to release the need to explain it to them. I want you to release the need. Here's where we get to the part about not caring so much what they think. Release the need by not taking it personally and by realizing, here's the key, that life is a mirror and that anything anyone is saying to you 99.99% of the time is not about you at all. It is 
100% about themselves, 100% about how they see the world, their fears, their issues with themselves. Because we can only see the world within our little box unless we stretch ourselves beyond that, right? So their judgment of you is really, it's a boomerang. It's a mirror. Their judgment of you is their judgment of themselves. And when we're not rooted, when we're not grounded in our own love for our own greatness, our own love for the fact that you are life expressing itself, you are the universe expressing itself, you are God expressing itself, himself, herself, here on this planet at this moment, that you are divine. That is where then we get into, well, such and such thinks this of me. Such and such doesn't like me. Such and such thinks that, you know, I am on the wrong path because it doesn't look like theirs. Such and such doesn't like my hair or my children or my family or my whatever it is, my decisions. Such and such doesn't like themselves. Like, that's it. Like, such and such has nothing to do <laughs> with, you know, if they're thinking their opinion that they're putting forward of you is their opinion of themselves or their lack of grounding in the fact that they've got their own greatness to worry about. Why are they coming over here worrying about yours, <laughs> right? They've got their own greatness and own path to worry about. And so when we remember, yes, God is La Sonia has affirmed I am divine. Let's affirm that I am divine. I am divine. And when we start with gratitude at the beginning, we're starting with the greatest prayer that there is, being grateful for, again, the fact that we are able to incarnate here together at this moment. And so... Doing, you know, I don't, I don't remember whose quote this originally is, but, you know, doing what we can to impress, what is it like, uh, I, I, I'm going to butcher the quote, but doing what we can to impress, you know, people that, you know, that's not the quote, <laughs> that could, don't care about themselves or don't love themselves anyway, right? Like doing what we can to be the best for them when they are in deep self-loathing or deep judgment or deep pain themselves, we need to separate ourselves from that. And so one of the things that you can do, you know, is have, do loving meditations, do loving visualizations where you see yourself and you see them and you literally cut the energetic cords between you. You literally cut the energetic cords between you. I have several of these decording meditations. They're on my site at womanifesting.com and on my YouTube channel, um, youtube.com, and actually in my last book as well, because it's a really, really powerful process to do an energetic decording, to literally cut the energy between you and other people, between you and their stuff. And it's a really cleansing and detoxing way to approach your life, to just, you know, shove off their stuff. But remember that at first, you've got to be grounded in your own. Be grounded in your own. Goddess Shanita said she just started talking to a guy named Divine. I love it. <laughs> Goddess Melissa said, your greatness may offend others. Yes, Keep going. Send blessings to those who are offended. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you go into your meditation or when you're going into your prayer, send light and send blessings to whoever it, it would be who would be impacting you in your life or sharing with you their good opinions. And remember, you know, just have in the back of your mind, write it down somewhere at the front of your door. When you see, when you leave your house, your opinion of me is none of my business. <laughs> what you think of me is none of my business. And that is how we begin to live 
independent of the good opinion of others, independent of whatever it is that they would think for us. And a lot of times, sometimes people are coming from a place of love. Sometimes people are coming from a place of love for you, but fear for what your choices might mean. Even something as simple as your hair, right? Like I remember um, years ago, years, years ago, like over 10 years ago, long, long time ago, my brother has had locks, you know, for a really, really, really long time. And where my mom grew up in Guyana, people with locks were persecuted. You know, she grew up like during like the time of like the Rastafarian movement, raising up and stuff like that. And so it scared her that he was growing locks, not because she didn't think her son was beautiful or that his hair was beautiful. She always knew that. But what that might mean, because she doesn't want her child to be putting himself in harm's way or putting himself in a place of judgment for other people to, you know, have opinions about him or maybe he wouldn't get a job or all of those fears. However, my brother today is thriving, thriving, right? Like with his beautiful locks in corporate America, what? Walking in like a lion. <laughs> Walking in like an African lion shining in corporate America. And so being independent of the good opinion of others is the greatest gift that you can give to your life path and your life purpose. Being independent of the good opinion of others is the greatest gift that you can give to yourself, reminding yourself that you are greatness, you are divine, you are enough, you are powerful, you are magical, you are mystical, you are incredible, and you, my love, are just getting started. And what they think of you, whoever the they's are, what they think of you, is none of your business. Some people will love you. Some people will hate you. Some people won't think about you at all. You are not for everybody and neither ever am I. And how amazing is that? And to that we say, amen, ashe, and so it is. We are enough. We are greatness. We are divine. Do you receive that today? Do you receive the fact that you are divine? Do you receive the fact that you are greatness? Do you receive the fact that other people's opinions of you are none of your business? Okay, so we are going to walk with that energy in this beautiful week. Walk with the energy that we are rooted in something greater. Walk in the energy of the fact that we are divinely inspired inspired in spirit literally the word is there we are divinely inspired walk in the energy that we are a reflection that we are the universe that you are the divine expressing itself and how magnificent is that purposely full says received yes goddess samantha goddess norma says yes i am divine i am magical i am melissa goddess oh i am i'm mystical goddess melissa says be amazing goddess lasonia says ashe and so it is all right my loves so this week we are finally starting our magical autumn be seen be heard movement that i've been talking to you about you will learn more about it tomorrow but for now we just say thank you the greatest prayer that there is thank you thank you thank you my sisters for joining me and giving me life this beautiful sunday morning be seen if you want to be heard if you choose to be a movement by being your magical self. Namaste, my loves. Namaste. Yes, we got this. You got this, Princess Adora. You're welcome, my love. <laughs>